What is up, everybody? I have had enough folks, guitar players, guys and gals, ask me uh, enough times uh, via DM and and emails and what have you to talk about uh, an opening line that I played on a demo video that I did. Uh, it was for a company called Cornerstone. Uh, the pedal was the Gladio pedal and I was in kind of a Robin Ford-esque kind of mood uh, when I wrote the tune for that demo. And there was an opening line uh, that went a little something like this. That I did that uh, enough of you wanted me to, to explain. So I, it's actually been a while since I've done any teaching videos, mainly because I just, <laughs> it's like, I feel like I'm just teaching you guys stuff that's gonna get you fired off the gig you're on if you actually play it. Um, but you know, I, I guess it's fun to, you know, play something that's a little outside. I always wanna show you guys things that you can plug in to your own vocabulary and write kind of new riffs, that's the, real reason behind this. I'm not a big theory guy. Um, I can't give you a, a ton of like theory background behind what I do, but I do like to play, you know, inside and outside of the key center. So in this case, we're in the key of A. I think the groove was something like that. Um, the riff, I actually opened that riff over what I wanted to paint as a five chord. So in the key of A, that would be the five chord, E. Now, in that video, I actually didn't go to the five chord. I actually just went, um, and there was a break and I started the line, but I truly did treat it like it was still a five chord. So with that in mind, thinking over, five chord, this is gonna sound weird, but this is the tonality I was actually going for. So that is basically a, a B flat dominant seven arpeggio. But you can hear how I can resolve it to A. So, that's the tonality, um, and that's the idea. Um, you can pretty much do that uh, anywhere. So, uh, speed bump wise, uh, we're starting past the 12th, uh, 12th, 12th uh, speed bump, um, and I'm sliding up. So I'm gonna play it really, really slow. I'm starting on the A string uh, with my, uh, I'd show it to you, but then, you know, I'd get demonetized, but it's my middle finger. Um, so I'm gonna play it really slow, and then I'll try and uh, point out some things. So, I've showed you guys, if you've looked at my other videos, you've seen me do this stuff. It's just based on shapes. So where it is outside is here. And then I get back inside at that 12, 13, 14th speed bump on the B string. Now I'm back into my A tonality. Um, And that's just a good thing to know right there. Because it's still a little bit outside, but I've, I've moved away from the B flat uh, dominant uh, or, you know, tonality into more what I consider just, like I said, in and out, uh, you know, almost chromatic. So, you get a lot of altered notes. So over that five chord, we're thinking of it as a five chord, you get a lot of just tweakies. So 
there's a flat five there. Now this is over the five chord. Over the one chord, that ends up being a flat nine. But, you know, if you just really look at it, just right there, over that E chord, pretty tweaky. Now if you played it over just A, still sounds cool. You're just getting uh, some altered notes there. So you're getting flat nine, there's a four, but you get a sharp five there, and then a major seven. But I'm thinking of it over E, so I hope this isn't getting crazy confusing. I'm confusing myself. Um, but over E, now you're getting flat five, dominant seven, uh, flat nine, and then the third. But that's where it resolves cool. So, so when you're building a riff like an outside thing, try to just think of that. That always sounds, that alone is something you can, you know, tweak on. And then the rest of the riff, this. That's all what I consider in the key of A. So I'm sliding up to that third. That's all just chromaticism to me. Now that right there, it, we're getting a seven, a flat five, five, and then back up, six, dominant seven, nine, flat five, six, five. So that that's all, um, you know, some of it I would consider melodic minor. Some of it is just, once again, being chromatic. This is kind of melodic minor. If I go up this way, that would be more diminished in tonality. But to me, this is more melodic minor. Sort of, if I hadn't have screwed it up. But those are the differences, and this is getting confusing and long. I'm just going to play this uh, fast one more time. So... That's up to speed. Now let me try and show it to you one more time slow, or more times slow. Let me try it again. And notice um, the roll there. You can figure that however you choose, but that's what I'm doing. So one more time, really slow. So there's a lot you can use in there. Um, even this... Uh just try that, you know, plug that in somewhere. Over A, you can start it on that dominant 7. If you did it over E, so there's a couple 
things in there that you can kind of goof around with and just try your own thing with it um, and just see if you can come up with with ideas to just plug into your own deal and the only thing i would say is if you if you're on like a pop session and they want this gorgeous melodic solo do not start it with <laughs> you will get fired. They'll think it was cute and they'll tell you to do it on your record, but there's that. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something cool from this. Um, just have fun with it. Figure out don't play it note for note. Find tonalities, weird things in there that you can make your own. And as always, I really appreciate you guys watching. I'll try to do more of these uh, in the future, but I really uh, appreciate everybody that has uh, chimed in and, you know, encouraged me to uh, to keep doing these. Okay, cool. See you next time, guys.